Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gloria and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I wanted to go through my entire collection. So I'll be showing you guys my entire plant shelf, which is where I house majority of my plants. I also have some plants kind of scattered throughout the house. So I don't really want to go through that today, but yeah, I just wanted to show you the plants that are in my collection for winter 2020 and give you an entire tour. So I'll go through each plant one by one and give you the name and a little bit of a description but mainly just like why i like it or like what's going on with it so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video make sure you subscribe if you do enjoy and give this video a thumbs up it really helps me out and yeah let's get started with today's video okay so let's start off with an overview this is how my shelf's looking like i have quite a small shelf but I try my best to fit quite a lot of plants on here. So there's one, two, three, four, four different levels of plants. And then at the very top, I have my little Ikea greenhouse. So yeah, let's just jump right in and I'll show you everything that's on my shelf, starting with that very top shelf. Climbed up on a chair and this is what the shelf is looking like. So at the very top, I have this IKEA soccer greenhouse that I think I bought for, I think, $20. Super affordable. I have this greenhouse at the very top because it doesn't really fit down here in between the shelves. So over on the very end here is my philodendron gigas, which is actually doing really well. There's a new leaf growing in there. Let me see if I can show you. There. So a new leaf is coming out. This plant is actually fully attached to that moss pole back there. Sorry if there's like water stains on this greenhouse. I do spray it, which is why it looks like this. And I have a yellow leaf down there, which is the oldest leaf of the plant. So I'm not too concerned, but this is the gigas on its moss pole, which is actually still in soil. If you guys can tell in there, I'm just a little too scared to transfer this baby to Lekka. So in the meantime, it's just gonna stay happily in soil. This one is my Anthurium Magnificum Hybrid, which it's a little hard to show you guys, but that's one of its leaves. It has a little bit of browning and yellowing, probably from lack of humidity. Those two leaves came with the plant when I initially bought it, but this is the new leaf that came out in my care. So that's the new leaf. It's actually looking really, really good. And if you Take a look back there there's actually another leaf which is super super exciting they come out so small and it's just really nice to watch it grow and yeah it's gonna take like a few weeks probably because they're pretty slow with growing their leaves to its full mature size and i hope it's a little bit bigger than this one although it's already pretty big so hopefully it doesn't outgrow this greenhouse because i don't know where to put it if that were to happen but look at all those roots. Oh my God, this one's really, really loving the Lekka life. I like these clear pots for my plants because it's just, it makes it so easy to know when to refill the water. This little stump here is sadly my Anthurium clarinervium. So yeah, it lost all of its leaves due to thrips back in the summer and it just hasn't recovered. So yeah, it's still a stump and I'm just gonna keep it in this greenhouse. Hopefully the humidity will speed up its recovery process. But yeah, it's my beautiful stump. It's still a stump and it hopefully will not forever stay a stump. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to do a bird's eye view over there. So that one is my Anthurium Magnificum. So this one is just a little baby seedling and it's honestly just so tiny. There's a new leaf that's coming over there. Looks really, really like wonky, but I mean, there's the other leaves. Just very tiny. If you were to compare that itty bitty thing compared to this giant hybrid, it's just, it's almost laughable, but the roots are growing really well. Let me close the greenhouse there. And yeah, moving on over here, I have this off to the side because the grow lights down here, these strip lights are actually a little bit too strong for these Hoyas and they were getting a little bit bleached. So I moved them up here this one is my Hoya Pachiclata, and I think it's the white one, so if it were to ever flower, it will have white fuzzy little flowers. So I can't wait for that to eventually one day happen, but in the meantime, I will just admire the leaves. The leaves are kind of like velvety soft, like a little bit fuzzy, and just 
Very, very minor veining, but still very cute. Back there, I have my Hoya Obovada, which as you can see in those leaves down there, it's a little bit lighter in color than the other leaves, meaning it was just getting a little bit too much sun, so it was just getting bleached. Hopefully it likes this spot a little bit better. The light that shines onto the greenhouse, it just gets a little bit of filtered light there. So it's not the brightest spot, but I think it's a lot happier. But on the second shelf here, I have my Hoya Vitalinoides, which has these beautiful veins on the two large leaves that it came with when I originally bought it. And it's actually grown two new leaves in my care. This one is progressing a little bit faster than the other one. So look at that, it's still quite soft and I think it still has some more growing to do so I don't think this is its full mature size and then I have a little baby one over here very excited I can't wait to see how it's gonna look like in the end and hopefully it gets to the size but I don't know it might take some time because it's barely grown back there I have my Hoya Bella reverse variegata it's grown really really big let me just move that out of the way and Honestly, I don't even know if this trellis is doing anything for it, but at least it's not flopping fully over. I did find some mealybugs on it recently, and I've been kind of alcohol swabbing it. So just doing some spot treatment, and I really don't want to move it from the rest of my plants. And I haven't seen any other mealybugs except on my rotunda flora, which is this next one right here. And this one also has a little bit of a mealybug situation, which is why they're side by side. It hasn't really grown much of at all during this time that I've had it. And I think it's probably because the mealybugs are like constantly on the leaves. I don't know if they're just affecting the new growth, but I haven't seen any. But I still really like this Hoya and it's one of my favorites because of its leaf shape. Let me see, look at that. It's kind of rectangular and just very cute. Over in the front here, I have my Hoya Lacunosa Silver Eskimo, and I don't know. I don't know if I like this plant anymore. It's caused so much trouble for me because it decided to rot like two, three times in soil, and then it was in moss, and now it's finally in LECA, and I think it's kind of calmed down, but as you can see, the leaves are still a little bit wrinkly. I don't know if it's just gonna be permanently wrinkly, but they have roots, so I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> This one is my Hoya Polynura, which is also doing really great. I have two new leaves over here actually, but these are still growing and hopefully will get bigger and bigger each day. I think it might be getting a little bit too much light as well because I think this leaf looks, I don't know, are the leaves looking a little bit like bleached? They do in my opinion, but it's hard to tell with the light. I'm happy that it's finally growing because it's been a while. This one was not a good grower for me. It doesn't like grow nice, fat, juicy leaves like everybody else's, but I mean, at least it did rot. This one is my Hoya Hainanensis Danang Vietnam with its wonderful veiny leaves. I think this one's actually not doing too well in LECA when it was transferred initially from soil. I actually had to cut off quite a bit of the roots, so it's trying to grow some new LECA roots in here, and I think it's gonna take its time <laughs> because the leaves are a little bit soft, so I think you know, the root system isn't as established as I want it to be for the size of this plant because it does trellis all the way around and there's quite a few leaves. So hopefully it will do better. This one is my Hoya Memoria. So this one I got it as a cutting from a friend and I initially rotted it when it was in soil. So since then it decided to grow these two new leaves, come out kind of this like burgundy color and over time it fades to this green. So yeah, very cute. It gives me Hoya pubicalyx vibes, but smaller and cuter. At the back here, I have my Hoya elliptica, which is also doing great. As you can see at the very top there, it's actually growing some new leaves. Those are new leaves. I can't believe it, finally. It's been rooting in moss and leka for a long time. I think maybe a few months now. It's finally growing some new leaves and I'm really happy about it. Beside it is a little orchid that actually just finished flowering. This little green nub, I think it's probably a root. It doesn't really look like a flower spike because it just finished spiking and blooming. This one is actually the Gastrochilus japonicus and it has the cutest like white and yellow flowers that kind of hover around the bottom near 
like the medium so the bottom of the plant and it's just super super cute if you check out my instagram i actually have a photo of the blooms for that gastrochilus and it was super adorable i just couldn't get over it it's probably one of my like most liked photos for some reason it like everyone loved it this one is my Balanopsis bellina. Yeah, this one also just finished flowering as well and it smells amazing. It literally smells like Fruit Loops and I can't get enough of it. So I'm a little bit sad that it's done blooming, but this one is a summer bloomer. So yeah, hopefully next summer it will bloom again for me. I didn't cut off the spike, which is over back there. Yeah, so I didn't cut off the spike because it is a continuous bloomer. So it will continue to grow new flower spikes at the end, the tip there. So yeah i'm just gonna leave that on let's move on to the shelf below so okay well i have my jewel orchid that's sticking out i'll show you guys that later but first we have the philodendron white princess so this white princess is actually so beautiful i love the variegation it's so bright and vibrant and just like so unique each leaf looks a little bit different and i have this new leaf coming out right now that looks very white i hope it doesn't look like this to be honest that's too much white for me i like kind of a leaf that looks like this where there's white chunks but it's mainly green so that it actually provides enough chlorophyll for the plant to grow this is my beautiful melano chrysum that i recently transferred to leka and it has kind of the self-watering moss pole which i probably have to like flush it because there's some mineral and salt deposits on the moss that I need to just get rid of but sadly I accidentally broke off this leaf and now it's just a little stump here I was touching it and you know I wasn't careful enough and snapped that leaf off I was really devastated honestly <laughs> but I'm sure it'll bounce back and this leaf is still looking really beautiful so this one is my African violet that I'm currently trying to propagate Obviously, it's not doing too hot. It looks like the leaves are dying, so I don't know if this is gonna make it, but I always have such bad luck propagating African violets. Like, look at this. It's so flimsy, and I originally was gonna propagate this so I can give this to my mom so she can have a variegated African violet, but I, I think this is gonna end up in the trash. <laughs> so I originally came from this plant, which was getting really, really bushy, and I just wanted to, like, propagate some of the bigger leaves because the smaller leaves are so cute and I just kind of wanted to make it look more I don't know cohesive and just like less messy so I took some of these big leaves and I stuck it into some soil hoping to propagate but it did not this one is my hybrid phalaenopsis so I'll put the name on the screen it has really pretty purpley blue flowers which is also done flowering because it blooms only in the summer so now that we're running into winter there's other Phalaenopsis that are in spike or blooming. Under this little dome here is actually my El Chaco Red. As you can see, this is the new leaf that came out in my care, which honestly looks beautiful. I wish it was a little bit bigger, but I think it's just trying to get used to my environment. And otherwise, it's doing pretty great. The roots are still not really established, which is why it's still in moss and I haven't transferred it to Leka yet but this was the leaf that I came with that was bent and damaged and the leaf back there is also an, an old import leaf. So I'm very happy that I finally have a nice leaf to show you guys. And yeah, this one seems to be happy. It literally just unfurled and I try to keep it under this dome so that it keeps the humidity higher because everything else lives in like 40% humidity in the winter, even with my humidifier on 24-7. Next up is my Hoya Callistophylla, which I think is the short leaf variety because the leaves are pretty small. This originally rotted and it's currently trying to root in Laka. The leaves still feel a little bit flimsy, so I'm pretty sure it's not fully rooted yet. So I'm just, you know, being patient. This one is my Hoya Meniparensis, which actually has so many peduncles right over there is kind of a peduncle it's a little bit hard to see because it's still fairly small um there's another one here which i'm just so shocked honestly i don't know how it's decided to grow so many peduncles but yeah i'm very happy with this i hope the peduncles will grow actually into blooms and don't blast so yeah wish me luck but this one is the hoya mini parensis with its very unique cool triangular like leaf shape super super awesome right over here is my hoya thompsonii pink and look there's some new leaves growing over here 
very baby leaves. And that's also a new leaf right here. So all the leaves I grow in my care are extra, extra fuzzy, which I'm just so amazed by because originally the plant didn't come with that much fuzz. Like not as much fuzz as I would have thought it should have had, but this one seems to be happy in my care and enjoying the leka actually. Minus this dried bit. I don't know what that is. Why, wh wh why are you yellow? Please tell me. This one is my Hoya obovada variegata, which I originally had a much bigger plant, but I cut it up so that I could, you know, share it with friends, sell it, do all the things. And now this is what I have left. I saved the four leaves that I liked the most, which were top cuttings. It just both rooted away into the leka. There's kind of a new growth point in there and I'm really happy. I can't wait for some new leaves to come out. And let's move down to the shelf below. Right up at the front is my philodendron micans with its beautiful velvety leaves. And this one is currently in soil, so I think I need to water it actually. It's feeling a little bit light. I don't like it to get too dry because then I tend to underwater it and then I just forget about it. That one is my Syngonium Pink Specter, Fleck or something like that. I'm not really sure what's the name of this, but I really like it. It has some pink veining and also has like some splashy like green and pink bits. They originally come out like really pink like that, but over time it fades and it looks really nice. So that one's just rooting away. Right up at the front here is my Hoya Numilarioides Pink Corona. Everyone's Numilarioides has actually been flowering and then there's mine that just never flowers. So I'm really upset about it, but otherwise it's grown a lot of leaves. As you can see, it goes around the trellis and it's very happy in the leka. That one is another Phalaenopsis with its kind of bloom on its last leg. It's a hybrid between two Phalaenopsis. Uh, I think one of its parents is uh, Samara, which has a Bellina parent in there, meaning this is also very fragrant, which I really like. It originally had three flowers, but they've one by one fallen off because this one is also a summer bloomer. This one is my jewel orchid, which you saw earlier up here. There's this beautiful bloom that's honestly just very, very tall. That's why it has to be on the edge of the shelf. And yeah, like, look at that. That's so cute, isn't it? Ugh, I love it. But yes, this one is the Ludicia Discolor Jewel Orchid. It's the most common jewel orchid that you'll find and very easy, a lot faster growing than the other jewel orchids, such as Makoti's Patola, Sandariana. I don't know, there's just so many different jewel orchids out there and they usually live better in terrariums versus this regular Ludicia discolor which does fine in just like room humidity. I have another orchid. I can't remember the name of this orchid honestly, but it's a miniature orchid. It's mounted on a piece of bark and when I don't keep it in this little like Tupperware container, it just dries out way too quickly so this is why it's like that. It also has a bunch of little cakeys everywhere so those are mini plants just branching off and there looks to be a bloom that's gonna open soon but these usually fall off pretty quickly they smell a little bit lemony but yeah i just keep that back there over in the back is my Cebu blue pothos which is the epipremnum Cebu blue and this one looks really nice it's starting to trail nicely i think once the vines get really long i'll probably bring it more towards the front so that it can just kind of cascade down the shelf and be absolutely stunning. This one is my Globulosa with its fuzzy fuzzy leaves and I just love it so much. It has such nice veining and honestly the backs look really stunning. Let me look at that. I think I might like the backs more than the front because the backs are fuzzy and I think the veining shows a little bit better in the back. Now we're coming close to the end which is this bottom shelf right here and it has a bunch of my small plants which, I don't know, I guess it's just easier to keep down here. So let's start off with this tray, which is mainly orchids. Actually, they're all orchids, yeah. So this one is my Ludicia Spider-Man, and it's a hybrid between two different orchids. I really like it. It's currently rehabbing in some moss, and I think it's actually fully rooted now, so I'm very happy. It actually was rotting before, and I lost like half the plant, but this is what is salvaged. This one right here is my Sideria japonica, which is actually in spike. Look at that baby. Oh my God, I can't wait for this to flower. The flowers are so cute. And honestly, this orchid's not doing that great, so I don't even know how it's flowering. Look at that yellow leaf over there. <laughs> I'm just waiting for this to fall off, but with three leaves, it's managed to spike, meaning it's, I don't know. I don't know what it means. 
But moving on, this one is my Tolumnia, and I'll keep the name on the screen because I forgot what it's called. Uh, this one is actually really cute. It's been in bloom for a while, and I didn't expect the flowers to last this long. I think I've had it for over like a month to two months, and it's still in bloom. That one back here is my Dendrobium Wang something. This one's also a very hard name to pronounce, so I'll leave that on the screen. And it's just a miniature dendrobium, which is very cute. I don't find that needed really much of a winter cold rest period. So I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think on the website, I did see that you're supposed to give it Phalaenopsis care. This one is my beautiful Syngonium. So this is one of my favorite Syngoniums right now. I don't know why it's like just so amazing. It has the most velvety, like soft leaves and each leaf comes up bigger than the last. This is the size of the leaf that it originally came with, which as you can see is tiny and it's yellowing, but look at that. Beautiful, I love it, love it so much. So moving on, we have my Hoya fungi, which is right here. This one hasn't been doing much, so I don't really have much to say about it other than the backs are a little bit fuzzy, the front is veiny, and it's a great Hoya, just very slow grower. This one is my Hoya Finley Sonii Splash, which actually is coming out with a new leaf. Okay, so right over there, there's a new leaf. It's super, super tiny, but eventually they'll turn into this size. This one seems to be doing well in Lekka and it's not very veiny, but it's the Finley Sonii Splash. This one is my Hoya Sunrise with its wonderful sunstress leaves. The red really brings out the veiny. So I love it a lot. Back here, I have my Oncidium Twinkle. So this one is the Fragrance Fantasy and it has these cute little white mini flowers and it's just nice because it smells kind of vanilla-y so it gives this shelf a nice fragrance and the flowers kind of, they grow messy. They're just like everywhere and it kind of gets in the way but I don't really mind it. Here I have my Variegated String of Hearts which is also doing great. This was a trait that I got from a friend and it's actually grown quite a few leaves. So it's gotten a little bit bigger and I can't wait for it to continue growing. This one seems to be pretty easy. I thought I would have trouble with it, I don't know, like overwatering it or something, but that one's doing great. I tried to prop it up on this pot here so that it's a little bit more elevated <laughs> and closer to the grow lakes, if that makes sense. But last two plants here, I have my Hoya Australis Lisa with its two new leaves there and it's currently growing in Lekka as well. This used to be my number one favorite plant, but since then I've got other plants that I really, really like. I still really enjoy this one and it has very nice variegation. This one is my other Melanochrysum, which is in my cat mug here. And honestly, it's taking forever, but it looks like it's growing a new leaf soon. It at least has a new growth point and it's just a matter of time. But I really like this mug. It's a cat mug, of course. That's pretty much the bottom shelf and I pretty much will conclude the video here. It's been a super long video and I'm glad if you made it to the end. You're the real MVPs and thank you so much for watching. I hope you will subscribe and support my channel because I would really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.